startup called Go Spot Check. I'm a software engineer. Um, I've been giving out some swag. I can give out some more at the end. Um, and we're always hiring for engineering. <laughs> so today I'm talking about SQL, of when and how to use Postgres over Active Record. So by the end of this talk, the goal is that you are a little more informed about things you can do with Postgres and why sometimes you might choose to use that over Active Record. Also, that you don't fear it like I did for so long. So when I first started writing code, I was an apprentice at ThoughtBot, and my managing director mentioned to me that I should learn SQL. So I went on Amazon and I Googled SQL, and this is what came up, so I bought it. It's this big, skew, scary, huge book, um, and there's even a really creepy lizard in the front of it. So I tried reading the book, and it looked like gibberish, and I was like, fuck this, I'm not gonna learn SQL. <laughs> so fast forward a few years, um, I started working at GoSpotCheck, and I quickly realized that I would have to learn SQL. I was going through some stuff, and I'm like, shit, of course, there's a lot of SQL. But I've been there for 10 months now, and I've really learned to embrace it. I'm still not the best at it, but I'm not afraid to jump in and pick up hard SQL stories, even if I still have to ask for help. So I've learned a lot since coming to go spot check. Um, I specifically like Postgres. Postgres's logo is an elephant. Um, it's not exactly this one, but I thought it was cuter to show. But um, that doesn't matter. <laughs> so we do lots of Ruby and Rails at Go Spot Check. So we get to work with Active Record a lot. Um, this can really be a curse or a blessing. And for those of you who don't know what Active Record is, it's the model layer in, or the M in MVC where all the business logic lives. So we have a lot of Active Record queries in our apps. And this can also be a blessing because it's easy to get results quickly but it's also a curse because Active Record is not as performant. And a lot of times we choose to use Postgres over Active Record and here are some reasons why. So faster, obviously. A lot of times SQL is faster and more performant. We're scaling a, a lot right now, so sometimes faster is a requirement, otherwise our app completely falls over. So a rookie mistake that I first made was I thought this query only took 10.4 milliseconds. But when you benchmark it, it takes 143 milliseconds to run. The 10.4 is referring to how long it takes the SQL to run. The rest is Ruby. So that in itself shows you how much slower it is. Um, so you can just use raw SQL to do something like this. You put it in a string, and then you can pass it to active record. And you'll get back a more lightweight result that's basically an array of hashes. Um, it's faster than building all of your models up which is what took all the time in the last example, so we avoid most of the Rails overhead. Um, I was talking to Raina, who works for Galvanize this morning, and she did a personal project for G School. She ended up choosing SQL over Active Record, and her API call went from seven minutes to three minutes. That's a huge difference. Um, so just another example that I heard this morning. Mass inserting is also a lot faster. We want to create a bunch of things in the database. Active Record is going to be super, super slow especially depending on how many records you're creating. So instantiating a lot of active record objects can be slow if there are a lot of CSV entries in this example because you're building up a lot of objects that you're not using. Besides, you just need to generate some pretty basic SQL to do this. So, oh, sorry, that's super small. Can you even see that in the back? Sorry. Uh, so basically, I'm just using SQL. It says insert into the syntax name, company ID, instructions, values, and then three question marks, and then CSV. I'm not going to try to read it out loud. I'm sorry that you can't see it. <laughs> but um, also notice here that we're not interpolating CSV 0, 1, and 2, because that's, does anyone know why that's scary to interpolate? Yes, exactly. Um, I didn't learn that until a couple weeks ago, <laughs> which is, was a big mistake. But anyways. SQL, SQL injection? Yeah, so I'm doing it this way. And so here, this is pretty straightforward. It's not really hard SQL to write, and you avoid the overhead of Rails once again. This, in my example that I did, was 70.36 times faster. That's a huge difference. Um, so I really think that active rec or SQL is the way to go in scenarios like this. Also, besides not being as performant, there are some things that you want to do that cannot be done very easily or done at all in Active Record. So I read this article by the Odin Project. It was praising Active Record and making a bold claim that anything you can do in SQL, you can do in Active Record. At the end of the article, however, I found an interesting statement that blatantly contradicted this. 
So sometimes you just can't get what you want from Active Record. Um, in that case, it gives you an interface to the bare metal SQL. They claim this as a last resort, but never discuss, discuss the issues of performance. So for us in the real world, performance matters. Because often when you're scaling, it's the difference between a working app and a non-working app. So also to drive the point home, the Ruby cookbook, I was reading that the other day, also talks about this, um, how Active Record just can't do everything that you can in SQL. So what are some things that you can do? Um, has anyone heard of a database view? People pretty familiar? Oh, only a few people, okay. So if you have a query that you need to, <laughs> I saw him. If you have a query that you need to run multiple times, you can save it in your database as a, as a database view. You don't need to type in the query each time. It is simply a named query that you can refer to like any ordinate, ordinary table. So here's an example of my view that I created called Kinsey's Song View. And basically, I just created a table that I can refer to later that contains just my songs. So views allow you to encapsulate the details of the structure of your tables, which might change as your application evolves. Um, views can be used in almost any place a real table can be used, and you can build other views on top of each other. That's pretty common. So where do I put this in a Rails app? How do I get this table in a migration? Um, you execute the SQL in a Rails migra migration. It's really just like creating a table. So here is my example in Rails. I have my active record migration. You can see def up. And I just say execute SQL. And as you can see, this is my, my view that I created in the previous slide. And boom, I have a table called Kinsey Song View that just contains my songs. And I can go back, use this in other queries, and it still exists. So another thing that we like to use a lot are CTEs, or common table expressions. Has anyone heard of these? Very few people, okay. Um, I think this is something that's really cool in Postgres. You definitely don't have access to this in Active Record. You can create something similar to a database view, view but it only exists during the current transaction, so it goes away. So this is a really handy thing if you have a super complex SQL query that seems overwhelming to manage. So this is an example from the Postgres docs. Um, as you can see, it's really helpful for breaking up a complex query into smaller, more manageable pieces. So you can see I have three different select statements um, here, and it makes debugging a lot easier because if I have a bug and I'm like, shit, I have no idea where to start, where this bug is, I can run each individual subquery separately and find out where the bug is. Um, I also think it's easier to read and follow what the query is doing. So common table expressions are also known as with clauses. As you can see here, we start with the with keyword. Um, and we are using them to create our variable, essentially. That's really what we're doing. Um, it's a little local variable that stores a database query, but remember you won't have access to it outside of this transaction. Um, as you can see here, we have the top region subquery, and then when we get down here in this where, we're referring it to it again down there. So really just like a variable. That's how I like to think of them. <laughs> and they're not as scary. So this is probably one of my favorite things to do in SQL that not a lot of people know about. Um, and also another thing that we cannot do in Active Record. It's a part of the SQL standard library. They're called window functions. Um, if you're older and have done a lot of stuff with like Oracle and other databases, you probably refer to them as something different. Uh, sorry. <laughs> what do you refer to them as? What do you call them? Not window functions? I don't know. Someone was like, that's not what you call them if you're my age. So um, I call them window functions. Basically, um, it performs a calculation across rows and different tables that are somehow related to the current row. So it gives you a defined look, like really a window into the exact data that you want to see. But instead of just talking about it, because I think it's super confusing to explain, I'm gonna show you an example that will hopefully make more sense. So my scenario is you work for a popular music streaming company. Uh, you get a feature request that looks like this. It states, you know, as a user, I can see the last four most recent listeners for all of my favorite songs. So I want to show the last five listeners for multiple songs all at one time, which is not a very easy thing to do. 
Uh, the naive way to do that would be to loop through all of my favorite songs and generate a query per friend, but that would, or I'm sorry, per song, but that would produce an n plus one querying rails, which are a no-no. And, or some really messy join query that you could produce, but I really couldn't think of a way to do that, especially that would be performant. Um, so I have a ton of users, and I know that active record alone isn't gonna cut it. So please note that this is a contrived story because if you were working for a music streaming company with a ton of users, you wouldn't be using Rails. Um, but bear with me for the purposes of exploring window functions. So here I have a basic query that's just select from outer join on. And I'm really sorry that you can't see in the back. <laughs> so this query is getting all the songs and their listeners and all the listeners' names. So we would get something that looks like this. So we could just do this and use Ruby to get back the most recent ones. But remember, we have a ton of users, so it's not going to be as performant. So this is a really, really good time when a window function comes in handy. So this is a query utilizing our window function. We have the same query as we did before. But if you notice, we've added an additional field into our select statement. And this window function is now going to produce this. And I'll kind of go into the last column in a minute. Um, but you're probably wondering, you know, what is dense rank? What is that? That's our actual window function. So dense rank gives us our ranking. Um, it's dense rank, not rank. Rank is another window function. So we get consecutive rankings, meaning that no rankings are skipped. Um, you can go and read the docs on different window functions. We have like row number, rank is a really popular one, um, but I'm not gonna go through all of them because that would be super boring. So we're gonna use dense rank for this example. Um, we also have, as you see down here, uh, as listen song. So we have dense rank over, and then I'll go into explaining what each of those things do. But notice that as listen songs is what we named it. And this is our, the name of our last column over here. Um, so that's what it gives us, that extra column. So over is the keyword that triggers the window function. So anytime you're using one of those functions like dense rank or rank, you're gonna need to use the keyword over. So here, this partition by, um, this is, which is within the over, we are saying that we scope the rank to the song. And this ranks the listeners by listened at. That's all we're doing. So for your homework, you need to refactor this window function to use common table expressions. And whoever does that wins a prize. Just kidding, not really. I think that would be really hard. But uh, what you would do to be a good next step would be to refactor <laughs> to use common table expressions to make this more readable and breaking it up into smaller subqueries to make it easier to debug, like I was saying earlier. So some best practices, really quick. Wrap everything in a transaction. Um, it's a good way to get fired if you don't do this because you could really mess some things up if you don't and can, has really saved a lot of people a lot of time. Um, especially when you're doing work in the command line and you know, mutating different, not mutating, um, you know, changing a bunch of different things. It's super helpful. So you just need this simple word, begin, then your SQL, and then if you're like, oh, you go back and look at it, you're like, shit, that's not what I meant to put. All you have to do is roll back. Boom, it's done, nothing was changed, it's awesome. But if you like what you did, you looked at it, okay, everything's great, you commit. Um, I hadn't been doing that for a long time, and luckily I never made a big mistake, but I've heard so many horror stories of people completely erasing entire databases and everything like that not doing this. Um, you probably should have your database backed up anyways, but still. Data clips are pretty sweet. Has anyone used data clips before? No, okay. So do people use Heroku in here or know what Heroku is? Okay, great. Um, so with their data clips, you can easily share data from your database now and create a simple query. It's really awesome. Um, we use this a lot. So you can just go to postgresheroku.com and they have this really easy to use interface. Um, as you can see here, you can create your data clip. It'll show all your data clips. And clicking into one, so this is an example from GoSpotCheck, 
we're looking at our last five mission responses. And as you can see below there, we have a SQL uh, query that's getting all the latest mission responses. Um, this can be used to share with anyone in your company. So it's great for investors or people who are doing support. Uh, they can be frozen in time or reflect incoming data. You can change that however you'd like. They're also read-only transactions. So when you're handing this to someone who might not be technical like you are, it's great because they can't delete or edit data. Um, you also, you need to use SQL to do these. You can't go in here and do active record. You have to know SQL. And I think they're a pretty useful thing. Um, so now uh, it's time to start experimenting. I would not go and get this book and try to read it. I now use this book as a reference, and I don't think it's as intimidating. Because what I did to really get familiar with SQL um, is I gave myself a challenge. I told myself I'm going to do a personal project and I'm going to use SQL. So I built this dashboard for our company. And there are a lot more metrics on it, but I can't show it for sensitivity reasons. So I just showed a little bit of it. And I built all of the queries using SQL. So here's an example of one of them. I'm getting all of the average daily mission responses for our company. And I have my query, and then I'm passing it to Active Record to show, like I did here. This isn't an example of the mission responses, but still. And this is what really got me excited about SQL, I guess, because I was like, wow, I can build these cool dashboards and see all this data. And it was just really exciting for me. So I also I use this method, current date. A lot of people don't know that these exist in Postgres and these date time functions. So sorry, this is super small. Um, things like current date, current time. For me, it feels a lot like I'm still writing Rails. So in order to get started, you can just fire up Rails DB console and start playing. So happy sequeling. <laughs> That's all I have. So if you have any questions, you can you know, tweet at me or email me or come talk to me after. There's this new trend at conferences um, where you don't take questions in front of audiences because people say the questions aren't relevant and they don't want to sit there any longer. So plus I like having one-on-one -on -one conversations. So come find me if you have any questions. Thank you. Or if you want swag too. <laughs> <laughs>